Dr. Paul Mason. Reverse osteoporosis and bone fractures with a high protein diet and have no hunger. I see a lot of overuse injuries. So the classical case would be, is so I, I, I don't just treat elite athletes. I also treat members of the general public. Mm -hmm. And the classical patient would be a middle-aged female who comes in with a stress fracture. Oh, so tell me about your activity. How often are you doing it? How far are you going? Okay. And we get out there, okay, I'm walking 15,000 steps a day, rah, you know, rah, rah, rah. Mm. And then the kicker, why? And sometimes they just look at me because they, they know well that I know why. <laughs> but there's often this degree of awkwardness about admitting it. It's obviously for weight control. Why else does anybody exercise them into the ground while starving their body of nutrients so much that they develop stress fractures? If you're not an elite athlete training for a competition, why, well, you know, what need does, you know, the you know, average middle-aged female have for exercise to this degree? Except if that her only understanding of weight gain and weight loss is the calories in, calories out hypothesis. We just have to burn all of this off. And usually that then opens up and I say, well, you know, you've got a stress fracture, so you're going to have to curtail the activity. And that usually puts them into a, a state of despondency because it's like, how on earth else am I going to be able to lose this weight? You know, you don't understand. I, if I don't walk for six hours a day, I'm going to keep putting on weight. This is the only possible way I've got of maintaining my current body weight. And then it's like, actually, no. Right. You can't outrun a bad diet. doesn't matter what you do. It will always come up, catch up to you eventually. There's another way we can do this. And you don't have to be hungry. You don't have to starve yourself to do it. And to boot, those stress fractures, which are probably contributed to by poor bone health, you know, which can lead to osteoporosis, so on and so forth, right. we can actually reverse osteoporosis with nutrition. So, and... As an endocrinologist, you know full well about the drugs that we promote with the bisphosphonate drugs, which actually the way they work. So they actually impair bone turnover, which doesn't mean much to the general public. But to you, you know that if you have impaired bone turnover, you have bone that's vulnerable to fracture. We have these atypical fractures in the big thigh bone when people take these. In athletes who have been inappropriately given these for stress fractures, we end up basically, I've seen it end careers because they can never get over because it stays in the bones it, it stays there for at least 10 After years years and years bones. it's you know it's you know it's just an awful drug and then we have other drugs which have side effects and this is our standard treatment for osteoporosis and we can reverse it well so let me tell you about this study so it was from 2002 it was by a couple of researchers dawson and Hughes. so they looked at a uh, a population over the age of 65 which to you says, well, that's got it, and half of them are females. And you're saying postmenopausal females, you've got no hope, we can't fix your bones. So they gave them uh, calcium uh, citrate and vitamin D as a supplement, blinded, randomized. Right. And they monitored their bone density with DEXA scanning. So pretty much gold standard. And then they got intelligent. They did a quote. They said, we're going to stratify the, stu the study population by protein intake. So they, they put the study population into tertiaries based mm -hmm. on how much protein they were eating, um, lowest, middle, and highest. And they found that on, as assessed by DEXA scanning, over the course of three years, those participants having the highest protein intake with the vitamin D and calcium reversed their osteoporosis. Let's have a look at what bone is. So they're, they're all necessary. Because everybody thinks, okay, Bones made of calcium. You know what? Bones actually more made of protein. Protein is the scaffolding upon which the calcium and other minerals can be inserted. And vitamin D just helps your body absorb calcium. So we sort of, you know, we, we use vitamin D and calcium interchangeably insofar as this goes. So let's think what happens if you have low calcium levels in your blood? Your body's going to go, well, I'm going to break down the bone. I have to just break down the protein to get to the calcium to put a little bit of calcium in the circulation because we know that without enough calcium in the circulation, you can get problems. And then if you put a lot of calcium into the system, you reduce the body's need to break down bone. 
And that's what we've found over many, many years. If you give people calcium, you can slow down or, you know, put a pause on the degradation of bone. But you can't make new bone because you're missing the protein. A classic patient from the general public, middle-aged female with a stress fracture. She says, I am walking 15,000 steps a day. He asks, why? She reluctantly says, of course, it's per weight control. Why else would anyone exercise themselves into the ground while starving themselves of nutrients that is actually causing their stress fractures? What need does she have to overexercise to this degree unless her only understanding of weight loss is calories in, calories out? She says, I just have to burn all of this off. So I say, with your stress fracture, you have to curtail your activity. This usually puts them into a state of despondency. She says, if I don't walk six hours a day, how will I lose weight? This is the only way I have of maintaining my body weight. He replies, actually, no, you cannot outrun a bad diet. There is another way, and you don't have to be hungry. And we can reverse osteoporosis with nutrition. Referring to Dr. Gland, Dr. Mason says, as an endocrinologist, you know that the bisphosphonate drugs actually impair bone turnover. With poor bone turnover, your bone is vulnerable to fracture. We have atypical fractures in the big thigh bone with these drugs. In athletes who are inappropriately given these drugs, they have had their careers ended because it stays in the bones for years and years. And we have other drugs with side effects. And this is our standard treatment for osteoporosis. And we know that we can reverse it. In a 2002 study, looked at patients over 65, half were female, gave them calcium citrate and vitamin D as supplement. Blinded study, randomized study, their bone density was monitored using DEXA scanning. Then they stratified the population by protein intake. They divided the study group by low, medium, and high protein intake. The findings? Over three years, using DEXA scanning, the patients with the highest protein had their osteoporosis reversed. All three ingredients are necessary. Vitamin D, calcium, protein. Bone is more made of protein. It is the scaffolding into which calcium and other minerals can be inserted. Vitamin D helps your body absorb calcium. What happens when your blood is low in calcium? The body breaks down the bone to get calcium into the blood circulation. So, giving calcium as a supplement slows bone loss but it doesn't create new bone unless you add protein. Annotated, summarized. Please share with a loved one.